Akela Lacey. She uh, wrote a really interesting piece for The Intercept that we talked about yesterday. Uh, but we want to bring her on to talk about it here. It's called The New Dark Money Group Spending Against Progressives is Suspiciously Well Aligned with Powerful Democrats. Hmm. Great, another dark money group against progressives. All right, Akela, great to have you here. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, Cenk. Okay, so uh, for the folks uh, who didn't catch our segment uh, yesterday, so tell us about it. Uh, who is the, what, what? What's the new group? So this group is called Opportunity for All Action Fund. Um, it's not clear who is actually running it. It's a it's a 501c4, uh, which means that it doesn't have to disclose its donors. Uh, but the folks who uh, you know are sort of on the operational paperwork side are longtime Democratic operatives, uh, folks who worked on. Hillary Clinton's 2008 presidential campaign, um, the Obama Biden uh, 2012 campaign, uh, and longtime uh, congressional staffers, including someone who used to run, uh, you know, financial uh, services for the DCCC. So um, this group has been spending um, in a number of key Democratic primaries, and then one random Republican primary where the winner would uh, is going on to face. Uh, Josh Gothheimer, um, one of the most conservative Democrats in the caucus. Um, so they're spending, they've spent in uh, two races that have already happened. Uh, and then there's two others that are coming up, including today, uh, Amy Villela's primary against Dina Titus in Nevada. Uh, and then in a couple weeks, uh, Denny Davis, uh, representative in Chicago, is also facing a primary and they've spent uh, b- uh, backing uh, his incumbency. Yeah, so Akela, they, uh, a lot of Democrats make the excuse and the mainstream media goes along with it completely. Like, oh, we're just doing incumbents here. It just happens to be that we spend against progressives in every single race. Just a wild, wild coincidence. So, uh, well, what's your take on that based on your report? Well, I, you know, it's, it's, sort of notable that this group is spending in races where we're talking about safe blue districts. Um, The party has a lot on its plate (laughs) in upcoming midterms. You know, obviously part of their strategy has been trying to tamp down on the progressive wing in hopes that that will help them when they're, you know, in general elections, but that hasn't necessarily behooved them in a lot of cases. And so um, it's it's definitely, you know, this obviously, this group is not. You know, we're not saying that. Um, you know, it's Nancy Pelosi is is directing it, but it's 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 clear that they have the same interests as you know top House Democrats who are backing some of these same incumbents, including you know all of the all of the target races that they're working on are the same target races that Team Blue Pack, which um, Hakeem, Rep. Hakeem Jeffries and, and Josh Gothheimer and Rep. Terry Sewell launched um, with the express intention of protecting incumbents who are facing primary. Challenges. Challengers, most of whom are facing primaries from their left. So it's just sort of another data point in the sort of criticism against the party that they are utilizing resources on pushing against growing support for these progressive policies instead of sort of you know allocating those resources towards districts that are you know actually have a have a chance of flipping red, which is not the case in the seats that this group is spending in. Uh, Kayla, I, I don't know that you'll necessarily, like off the top of your head, have percentages or anything. But I'm just curious, based on the research that you did in advance of this, um, look, this, this seems like a significant new group. But we know that there there has also been dark money for some time. Do you have any idea in in this cycle how significant their contributions have have been as a as a part of the total spending in these races? And do you have any sort of gut feeling about um, the? Like how big of an impact dark money has had generally in this election cycle, perhaps in comparison to, to past ones? Uh, so this group, you know, they're new. They're they're only spending in a handful of races. I I, I won't I don't want to overstate the amount of money in comparison. You know, when, especially when we're talking about outside groups. You know, we've done a lot of coverage on um, spending by APAC and Democratic Majority for Israel, where you're talking about millions of dollars on on primaries. This group hasn't reached that threshold, but it's one piece of this larger sort of apparatus of both dark money groups, groups that have to disclose their donors who are working sort of to achieve these same goals, which is to to stop progressives from winning these races. 
in terms of the amount of that dark money has impacted this this year's cycle, I think you know we're seeing some other groups that have been kind of more unabashed about being very proud of taking money from sort of unsavory figures. You know, some of the the you know we've done a lot of coverage of APAC's new PAC, and they endorsed you know more than 100 Republicans who voted to overturn the election the election results. So it's it's almost more explicit this cycle. We're seeing you know on on the one hand, we do have dark money groups that are, are are making a big impact, but we also have a sort of explicit spending um, that is is relying on Republican and sort of really right wing donors um, to to reach the same aims that that the Democratic Party is is working towards. So, uh, Akela, before we go to Francesca, um, it, it's funny you said that. I wanted to follow up because when I introduced you, I said we did your story about this corrupt pack yesterday on the show. It was a different story. Okay, there's so many stories about corrupt packs, but you're you're one of the very, very, very few reporters that are covering it. So, um, so my question in that regard is, do these? I assume you ask them for comment. Do these corporate Democrats ever comment like, oh, like the the one we covered yesterday? You've got all these Republicans that are giving to Democratic packs. And like Loeb that you referred to, and then you got Robert Kraft who was giving to Chantel Brown, which was a different story. I mean, tons of Republican money is coming in to Democratic elections to support establishment Democrats. Does the Hakeem Jeffries, do the Hakeem Jeffries of the world, the the Danny Davises or whoever go, Oh yeah, we love it, man. We were using Republican money to bash progressives or there no comment or what do they say? So in the case of the story that you're referring to yesterday with the pack that's spending to unseat Rashida to leave, I mean, yeah, that was their exact response when I asked them for a comment. They and I've seen this with other campaigns that take or do fundraisers with Republicans. You know, they say we're proud to have support, of, you know, from a wide spectrum of folks across across the political, you know, a wide variety of folks across the political spectrum. In terms of you know this argument being like there's there's a cognitive dissonance when you're talking about you know Democrats being like yes we're going to do everything that we can to fight against the Republican agenda but we need them to support us in order to win those elections and then you see obviously even when they do have power they're not doing everything that they can to to even you know wield that power or fight against the folks who are who are blocking their agenda so you know. Yes, they sort of acknowledge it, but I think they acknowledge it because there isn't really, there's no one holding them accountable necessarily for, you know, at least within their own ranks for doing that, or very few at least. You know, we saw Representative Ocasio Cortez shared that story about the Bakari Sellers pack and and sort of made this point that you know Republicans and Democrats are are pouring money into these races, and so that's one of the few voices that's trying to bring attention to this. But yeah, it's it's. It's it is interesting when they say that because it's obviously something that they think is going to go over well with people, and I guess I guess it does for for some folks. But yeah, when they it say make a lot of sense. Yeah, <laughs> when they say, oh no, we've got a wide tent. That's why we have Republicans helping our agenda. I think is it our agenda? Hmm. Is that why the Republicans gave millions of dollars to it? Perhaps maybe right. not quite our agenda. But Francesca, go ahead. Oh, I I just think that in this particular piece about dark money. It feels so obvious that it's the same people behind the Team Blue pack, right? Like they spent $150,000 in Gottheimer's race <laughs> for another Republican. The only time they're like throwing their money because Pallada, the the Trump backed Republican, as you write, was in within eight points of Gottheimer, which is like, huh? I wonder why a Republican is so close to taking out a Democrat. Maybe because Gottheimer and this Republican's politics are really similar, mm -hmm. and like Gottheimer is not actually standing out. So I guess I'm just wondering, like, is it kind of all but known that it's Gottheimer's and? Hakeem Jeffries and the same folks. And will that ever be known? Like, will they, they obviously, they don't have an obligation, correct, to disclose? 
No, and they did not. I, I reached out to both of their offices for comment. Um, they did not comment on the record, or one office did not comment on the record. The other office did not respond at all. Um, but I was talking with someone else who, you know, we made the point that nobody cares that much about Josh Kottheimer other than Josh Gottheimer. Like, <laughs> you don't have another. You don't have another committee that's spending on oh all these safe blue seats, and then we're just going to pick this random race that you also happen to be facing an actually tough challenge. Um, so I think you know people can draw their own conclusions from that, even if it's not Gottheimer and Jeffries directly saying yeah we want to do this. Like there are other ways to facilitate these things, and that's just how this stuff works in Washington. So I, to answer your question, effectively yes, but mm, um, no. yeah. yeah. <laughs> and Frank Pilato won anyway, so. He's, it didn't work, whatever they were doing. And that was one of the races that they spent most of the money on. So, so exactly. <laughs> yeah. So I just want to, real quick, Kayla, is there, like, do they ever square the fact that they, that they sometimes call themselves progressive, like Hakeem Jeffries, and they'll join the Progressive Caucus, and then they spend Republican millions of dollars of Republican money to defeat progressives? Like, do they, do they ever address that? Or, or do they not? That would be have too, to. a little bit too much, like, right? I think. I mean, they, you know, the, the word progressive has lost so much meaning in part because, um, you know, it, it's easy to, to espouse that or put that label on yourself, and people can point out, you know, the, the hypocrisy or the, or the contradictions, you know, all the day long if they want. But unfortunately, with the platform that these folks have and sort of the, um, in a lot of in a lot of outlets, the uncritical coverage that they get, they get away with it. So no, I mean they don't actually they don't have to admit, you know, I'm not actually progressive. I can just say all these things and do all these things and support the same policies, um, and then somehow I'm progressive because you know, I don't know, I'm not like explicitly fascist, right? Like that's sort of the bar, the bar is on the floor when we're talking about like progressives in Congress, and um, a lot of these folks have sort of. Uh, uh, competing memberships in the Progressive Caucus and then some more of the Conservative Caucuses. So there's a, the, the the lines are very fluid, um, and that's sort of by design, I think. Yeah, okay. I just want to ask you this, uh, some something somewhat related to see if it was on your radar or anyone at the, at the Intercept that would be looking into this. Um, obviously, th there's the groups that you've identified, and you mentioned uh, APACs, PACs that have been getting involved in some of these races. Uh, I've also noticed uh, a little bit of beginning reporting on crypto-backed PACs weighing in on some of these progressive races. Is that a thing that you've been looking into? Like, I've only sort of gotten the impression that it seems like this is becoming a big thing relatively rapidly. Do you have any thoughts about uh, that area of facts? Yeah, so the crypto space is really interesting. I haven't covered a lot of this personally, but I have seen it come up in some of the races that we've written about. So uh, they backed Chantel Brown in the, the primary with Nina Turner, but they've also backed um, for other candidates, you know, further, you know, I, to who you know are a little bit more believably <laughs> under this progressive banner. Um, in term, so they they're backing. Um, uh, I'm forgetting her name, um, Jasmine Crockett. In um, there's a Texas congressional race that she she won that race. Um, she was also the handpicked successor of the retiring incumbent. Um, and she has, you know, expressed support for some progressive policies, and I think is sort of waiting until was waiting until after the primary to to make a little bit more of a definitive stance in some of those areas. But a crypto pack backed her. Um, the crypto packs also have been spending to back John Fetterman in Pennsylvania. Like they're popping mm -hmm. up in these really random races. So that's definitely an area that um, I hope other people report more on because I'm su I'm super curious about it too. And um, that's something that I'm sure I will. Need to learn more about okay. in the coming weeks. I'll tell you guys what I've seen, and so a lot of it I saw actually, Kayla, in your reporting at the Intercept, and I've seen in a couple of other articles, and I'm connecting the dots here. Almost every race, crypto and and APAC are in the same races. So if APAC's going in a certain direction, Democratic majority for Israel is going in a certain direction, so is crypto. So like Fetterman's a great progressive. But he's very right wing on Israel, um, and so, and then all of a sudden, crypto shows up in in his race on his side, even though he's really progressive on other issues. So that's what the kind of thing that makes me go, hmm, interesting, mm -hmm. right? So uh, we'll see how that that goes. I mean, crypto is such a wild card. Anyways, uh, one, one more thing I want to ask, Kayla. So in Washington, they always say like supporting incumbents as as if it's like. 
by definition a good thing. And then when when challenged on it, normally they say, well, that's because we need their votes. Uh, but they backed uh, Cuellar in Texas, and he votes against us on gun control, on uh, women's rights, and the list goes on and on. So it's definitely not about the votes. So have they ever been challenged on, wait, supporting incumbents just means supporting the powerful. And why is that a democratic or a left, even if you don't want to call it progressive, why is that a democratic value to support the already powerful, even if they vote against us? So they, you know, Nancy Pelosi has been asked this question, especially in the context of Henry Cuellar and her answer. You know, the the limits of her answer are that I, we back incumbents. Um, obviously, you know, I think some of what we've tried to, um, you know, pull out the thread on this a little bit is just showing the inconsistency of that policy to sort of illuminate the underlying. Uh, Aims, which is is what you're saying, and so you know, taking that example of the Bakari Sellers Pack, you know, had that been uh, a moderate, a moderate incumbent who was who was getting attacked by, or you know, be, being, um, you know, saying that they're going to be having this millions of dollars spent against them, you would expect that you know, like Democratic leadership would be pretty explicit or quick in their response and their defense. Um, we haven't seen that with. Uh, with Rep Talib, and I mean, this we Politico wrote about this spending um, a while ago. We sort of just wrote more about the 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 source of the money that's going into this pack, and so Democrats have had a, a long time to to come out and and defend Rashida Talib in that case, and they haven't um, for a lot of reasons, obviously because they disagree with sort of the criticisms that, that she's leveled against the party. But um, yeah, no, that's not something that I don't I don't in my opinion and in my experience, that's not something that I think. They really care about. I think they think those questions are sort of they brush them off because they get to fall back on this excuse that they're doing whatever they can to protect the party because that's their job. Um, and obviously, like our job is to point out that they're still even if they're doing that, they're not necessarily doing their job. So, uh, yeah. well, your job is to do objective reporting on it. My job is to do analysis of it and commentary. Right. <laughs> and so, uh, I let, here's my analysis. Nancy Pelosi fought against an incumbent when it was Ed Markey, who was more progressive. And then she is leaving Rashida Tlaib with no defense at all when they're spending all this money against her, even though she's an incumbent. Gee, I wonder why. And and of course, the reason she doesn't really respond is because the New York Times and Washington Post lie on her behalf. They pretend that it's really about incumbency and they don't ever notice, Oh, she's only targeting progressives. And then in fact, they'll call her progressive. So in my opinion, they totally and utterly lie and cover up the corruption of democratic leadership. So she feels free to say anything she likes, because it's not gonna be challenged other than by you, okay? And so on that note, last thing, did Bakari Sellers ever respond? To that article? No, no, but I thought, you know, so many people tagged him into the replies when I shared the story. I thought maybe he would say something, but no, he has not responded. You know what that yeah. means? <laughs> oh, look, my hand in the cookie jar. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so he doesn't want to talk about that at all. Uh, and so um, just beware. Uh, and and by look, my note is beware of identity politics because corporate Democrats use it all the time. That other article you wrote, Akela, is a, in my opinion, you didn't say it, I'm saying it, is a perfect example of it. Well, oh, we are here to find a black candidate in Detroit, even though yeah. the black voters voted for Rashida Tlaib already. But the voters are not black elites. You really need a black elite funded by Republicans and pro-Israel groups, but they are yeah. for black people. And there's, I mean, this is sort of they. They also neglect to to mention that Detroit also happens to have a large Arab American community, mm -hmm. and or you know whether that would be relevant at all. Um, and then you know back to the other piece, uh, this idea about protecting incumbents. Hakeem Jeffries challenged an incumbent, and that's how he was elected. Um, and that's never, you know, they never really address mm -hmm. that when they're um, when they're launching these uh, these groups or or waging these battles. So. Yeah. Awesome. Yep. All right. Uh, obviously, as you can tell from this interview, you got to be reading Akira Lacey's articles on the Intercept. Uh, uh, a really bright spot in uh, in coverage of politics. Thank you so much for joining us. Really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Thanks for watching the Young Turks. Really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. 
you'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all of that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.